Uh, before we get into number 11, if you have been paying close attention to this channel, you probably expected another tour to be at number 11. You did not expect this one, mainly because um, back in video number 14, I heavily implied, insinuated, if not outright stated without outright stating that there would be another tour at this spot. Um, I pretty much said that there were four tours, pretty much all around the same era of Frank that were going to be 14, 13, 12, and 11. Well, I have changed that because I've been listening to sort of random tapes from these tours. And for this specific tour, the one that was supposed to be at number 11, um, I've probably listened to maybe eight or nine random shows, maybe more than that in the last couple of days, just picking things out, just grabbing a cassette um, and listening to it on the way to work or while doing stuff. And I've yet to find a bad show. I've yet to find a boring show. I've yet to find a show that doesn't have moments that go, oh, wow. And so what was number 11 is no longer number 11. And in fact, uh, when I originally uh, wrote, listened and wrote an opinion about that tour decades ago, my uh, review ended with this. In my opinion, easily one of Frank's top five tours. And I think the reason I had it at number 11 in the recent sort of list was because other tours have risen since then, and I have a higher opinion of some tours. And then so instead of just kind of putting them behind what is now not number 11, I sort of moved number 11 back, forgetting how incredible it is. So I will like to say this, that the one you thought was number 11 is now back in the top five, where it belongs. So the earliest you will see it is five. Won't be number one. I think we all know what number one is. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's why this is at number 11. It used to be number 10. But now it's at number 11. On to the video. Hello, thanks for watching. My name is Shaggy, the Devastated by Allergies Hippie. I'm gonna try to make this video without sneezing or having to pause to uh, blow my nose uh, because a major cold front blew into Texas and with it, all of the allergens in the world, apparently. Um, and also, just like, um, Fozzie and Kermit. I'm just moving right along. So trying to get this done. But we are on number 11. Oh yeah, I'm ranking the tours that Frank Zappa played on. The 26 tours that I have deemed tours. All of the 60s I have decided is one tour. I split winter. Se I split fall 77 and winter 78 though. It's the exact same band and not that big of a difference in the set list. But those are two different tours because they are. Um, but we are now on number 11 from 26 to none, number one. Winter 74. I have grown to love this over the years. I kind of dismissed this a couple decades ago as sort of a half-baked in-between greatness uh, tour, but I've decided it's still pretty half-baked, but it's it's actually great. Um, if you want to check out this tour in Frank's official catalog, too bad, you out of luck, you can't. Um, it does not exist. Uh, there are no tracks, there are no songs. Nothing from this tour has been released live. Um, officially has been released live. Nothing live from this tour has been officially released. You know what I'm talking about. Um, which makes me think nothing exists in the vault from this tour. This is the tour that took place after the Roxy, uh, the Fall 73 tour, which ended with Frank, almost ended. There were two shows after that. Uh, Frank recording and videotaping and the big hoopla that was the Roxy shows. Um, we know there were issues with the video not matching the sound. Um, it cost Frank money and time and a lot of energy. So I'm thinking he went on this tour from February, mid-February through the end of March, sort of a late winter, early spring tour. It was like, I'm not recording anything, not videotaping anything. I'm just going to go out there and have fun and play music and introduce some new songs and have a good old time. So I fear that other than the handful of not that great sounding tapes we have from this tour, this is probably, like, we're not going to get anything official from this tour. I'm just kind of resigned myself to that sad fact. Um, but, yeah, so this is essentially the same band that was in the Roxy Fall 73 with the addition of Jeff Simmons on guitar. He's on the Roxy album, but he wasn't part of that band. There were uh, Roxy shows, and then the following night, Frank rented out the Roxy, and they did, like, a private show where they recorded stuff, and they did, like really long versions of Dummy Up that Frank edited down to put on the album. 
And Simmons was there for those, but he wasn't actually a part of the band. It wasn't in those like live shows, the, the real live shows. So here's who's in the band. Frank Zappa, George Duke on keyboard and vocals, Napoleon Murphy Brock on vocal sax and flute, Bruce Fowler on trombone, Bone, hum, Ralph Humphrey and Chester Thompson on drums, Ruth Underwood on percussion and getting poked fun at and made fun of and harassed by Frank during Don't You Ever Watch That Thing, Tom Fowler on bass and Jeff Simmons on guitar and harmonica. And this is really sort of the uh, second of the seven Tom Fowler, George Duke era tours that are on this list. Fall 73, The Roxy was in the late teens. Um, this one is number 11. The other five are all in the top 10. By far my favorite era. Whatever it is that Tom Fowler and George Duke inspired in Frank, um, uh, yeah, I wish you could bottle it and sell it because th these tours are just magical. Um, and this is one of those that if we had more things available or I had more just more other than like the two good sounding shows that I listen to and then like the five that are not that good sounding shows that I listen to and they're not complete all of them and um, if we had more this could be higher on the list or it could fall back towards the back of the list but uh, I think 11 is a, is a good place for it just because we don't have very much out there representing this so tour. So the best way to get a sense of what is on this tour is simply to go over a set list because there were 24, I think, different songs played on this tour. Most of them were played every night. Um, so this this show is actually available on YouTube. It is 3874. Um, I'm just going to go over the set list because it pretty much covers everything that Frank did on this tour. Um, and Frank, I've talked about this before, but for this era, Frank kind of worked in modules is the way I like to look at it. Because he had these groups of songs that he just kind of, you know, flipped every night and put in different orders. And so your set list was pretty much the same grouping, the same songs, but just the order in which the groupings appeared differ. So this is the set list for the Kansas City 3874 show. Um, and this will give you a good sense of like, uh, yeah, what the groupings were and and uh, almost quite a number of these songs were in versions that have not been released. So they were either, you know, versions that fall somewhere between what you hear in Fall 73 or on uh, the uh, Road Tapes venue 2 that uh, August 73 and what you would hear later in the year in Fall 74. So a lot of these are just kind of these in-between versions where Frank is still tweaking things and hasn't yet arrived at like what sort of the official version of these songs are. So Cosmic Debris opens the Kansas show. Uh, that was its own module. Uh, it usually would start cold and cold kind of just appeared, um, you know, and out of nowhere. Uh, it wasn't usually a part of a grouping. Um, had solos in the middle where everybody got a chance to stretch out and solo, including a Jeff Simmons harmonica solo. Very loose, very bluesy, very jammy, just a very comfortable, <clears throat> very loose feeling. Um, Opened up a couple shows because I think it was a good way to kick off, get everybody just into it from the get-go before you get to the more difficult stuff. Um, then you get Montana into the hook, dun 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 into the George Improv, into Dupree's Paradise. Uh, Montana is Montana. Uh, George, again, would <clears throat> start off on keyboards. Frank would come in and conduct everybody, and they'd go through their paces and do a whole bunch of crazy improv stuff. Then at some point, you sense that Dupree's Paradise is going to come up, is coming, like they're about to end the improv, and you get that, like, where it gets calm, and then you get that cascade of piano and percussion, and then the dun, 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 before you go into Dupree's Paradise, just absolutely magical. One of the greatest live moments of, of, any, of Frank's entire career is every single transition from the improv into Dupree's Paradise. Get a bunch of solos in Dupree's Paradise. And for this tour, Frank's solo is not sort of that blank slate canvas, that just simple vamp, that two-chord vamp. I think it's a two-chord vamp that he would mostly solo over and then he would deviate from and kind of go out. This one, he's soloing over um, uh, the intro bass line to Carolina Hardcore Ecstasy, which is not yet a song and has not yet been played or released. So that he's playing his solo over that. So it it limits his solo. Like he can't, obviously the, the vamp is a lot more limiting in where he can go and he doesn't really push the boundaries as much, but it's really interesting. It's really cool to hear 
that vamp <clears throat> as a solo. And it's not the, the vamp that he would solo over in the actual song. It's, it's that opening part that he's now soloing over. So that is a neat little treat. Um, the next uh, module in this show is the Pygmy Twilight Idiot Bastard Son Cheapness. Um, Dummy Up is now very much a part of Pygmy Twilight. Uh, Dummy Up is sort of that loose funk jam in the middle. It's got those those that weird little chord progression towards the end. It's like I, which I can never remember it. Um, but then uh, Napoleon's improvising lyrics. Um, then it goes into the Idiot Bastard Son and Cheapness. Um, Cheapness is still kind of a hybrid version where you get parts of Fall 73, but you're not fully to where you would be. That middle section where it goes, uh, where Napoleon kind of riffs and improvises um, lyrically, that part is not as solidified, is not as clear as it would be. I think you still got the horrible eye section in here. Um, so this is a weird hybrid version, the cheapness. And then the next module is, is the big one. Um, and has two of the greatest treats from this tour. The next module opens up with Andy. This is a very early version of Andy. This is the early version of Andy. It debuts on this tour. Um, you can hear all the pieces that eventually go into the final version, um, other than the word Andy. It's not yet called Andy. In fact, the word Andy is not even in the song. Frank refers to, to it as, um, is there anything good inside of you? He introduces it at one point. At another point, I think he introduces it as something, anything. But you hear all these parts, but they each just feel a little bit different than they would by their final version. It's almost like if you're watching one of those bakery shows, you know, where they, they have like all the different like cupcakes or cakes that they're laying out and they're going to put frosting over it to like make it seem smooth. But it's all these individual things underneath. That's the way it feels like. His Frank has all these individual pieces underneath, but he's not yet put the frosting on top to like smooth out the segues. Um, so it feels a little more herky-jerky, um, but it works. I, it's fun. Um, I've definitely changed my opinion on these over the years. I originally thought they were just like interesting early versions, but now I think they're great early versions. Um, Andy, uh, the beginning has a really neat keyboard intro. The opening lyrics are a lot more like herky-jerky. There's a little soloing from Duke and Frank in the middle. Where Frank solos precedes where he would solo in the official version. The ending doesn't have that and it, and it, because Andy is no, not, doesn't exist yet. So it has Napoleon just kind of improvising things about the ride and stuff like that. That goes into a double-time version of Florentine Pogan. Dun, 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 just really fast. That also has pretty much all the parts of, there, of that are there, but it's really, really fast. There's also a neat little solo section in there where Duke or Frank kind of get to throw off some licks or riffs. And they're not really long solos. They really are just kind of messing around for a little while. But then at the end of Florentine Pogan, there is a really weird, interesting, funky segue into Kung Fu in which Frank throws in the line, uh, which would not appear in the official version. Um, Put them all together and they smell to you. Into Kung Fu. Um, pretty neat. Um, then Kung Fu goes into Penguin in Bondage. Uh, we get to Mercy Dween, the Dog Breath Variations, Uncle Meat, and Redunzel. And Redunzel sounds pretty close to the Lost Episodes version of that. We don't yet have Ruth's ma majestic intro. Um, that is one of the modules. Another module that got moved around is the Village of the Sun, Echidna's Arf of You, and Don't You Ever Wash That Thing. The intro in Village of the Sun, Frank is still kind of messing with. This one kind of sounds like what it would be by Fall 74, the stage two version, but it's got a lot more guitar in the beginning. It's got this weird thing where everybody's kind of yelling something in the band, like and some weird noise. Then it's got what rhythmically kind of sounds like the intro to the Fall 74, but what is layered on top with the guitar makes it sound different. And then once you get into the song, it's pretty much as you would expect, but just a little more, not as, not as hyper as Fall 74, a little slower pace, but still more sounding like that version than I think some of the earlier versions. Definitely doesn't sound like the Fall 78 version. Um, so you get that. Um, and then uh, in this show, the Kansas City show, the encore, you get the King Kong, Chungus Revenge, Mr. Green Jeans. You get that medley with little short solos in each of those songs. Um, and so that's pretty much everything that was played on this tour are those songs. The only other things, oh, Approximate popped up. 
um, I think at least once, very, very fast. Um, I think it was only once. Really fast, really chaotic with really short sort of like just solo. It's like it's it's the whole it, the energy of approximate is chaotic. It just doesn't really sound like Frank knows what he's doing. He's just like, we're going to play this and I'm going to point to you. You're going to solo and we're just going to accompany things. But it's a, a really good chaotic energy. Um, Babette pops up once kind of a not a monster version of this, but a kind of loose, jammy version of Babette. Um, what else um, is there? I think that's almost everything that was played on this tour are the songs I just talked about. Um, yeah, I think... Oh, Ica Rhodes uh, popped up. It wasn't in this show, but Ica Rhodes popped up. Um, this is... Um, not a good version of Inca Rhodes. Um, so Frank, essentially the post-solo half is, is still as it always was with those written parts and the part for the keyboard solo. Um, but the beginning part has this like really like, it's like you get the didn't, 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 but that goes through the entire first part of the song, including the solo. So the solo vamp is still that didn't, 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 didn't. So it's just, limiting where Frank can go and it kind of gets kind of gets a little repetitive and a little stale after a while um so that is one thing that obviously Frank would fix by the time it got to fall 74 and it became the majestic beast that it was but it is a little the first half of this Frank is still tweaking um we're no longer in that lounge version you know the 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 Sal Marquez lounge version or the George Duke lounge version we're now closer to where we would be by the one size fits all version but it's still a little too just kind of uh and it just a little this is the one version of a song that's kind of in its in its half-baked form that I think works the least successful is the first half of the Inca Roads on this tour. Um, and I think I got everything else, right? And that was it. Yeah, and that's it, right? I got everything. Yeah, so that's it. That's everything that was performed on this tour. Um, we're probably not ever going to hear it in its official and in, in any sort of official sounding capacity, sadly. Um, but uh, there are a couple good sounding shows. Again, the March 8th show is a pretty good sounding show. Uh, I think the second show of the tour, the uh, February 16th show um, from Berkeley, Go Bears. It's my alma mater. Uh, alma mater? I went to Berkeley. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty good sounding show. Um, and that one includes um, a uh, Frank explaining the story behind Dupree's Paradise. Um, I think it was a... Uh, you know, the, the, the whole like, yeah, this check out that show and hear this story for yourself. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, um, that's about it. I don't know what else to say about this tour. Um, yeah. Uh, one of the reasons it's great is because, uh, any tour that has Montana into the improv and the Dupree's paradise is going to rank high for me. Um, and this is fantastic. So yeah, I don't know what else to say about this just because, I only have a couple tapes that I listen to. There's not much out there, but all of it sounds really good. Frank's guitar playing isn't at its peak. Um, you know, he's Frank. It's great. It's good. It's not anywhere near where it would be by, like, say, November of 74. I don't think it's as interesting as it was early in 73. It's definitely nowhere near where it would be by 78, 79, 81, 82. 80, we'll throw 80 in there. <coughs> Allergies. But uh, not COVID. Um, but uh, yeah. So anyways, that's it. That's all I got to say about this. Yeah, let me know if you have heard one of those bad sounding tapes. Your thoughts on this tour. Um, all that kind of stuff. What I missed, what I'm wrong about. Yada, yada, yada. You know the drill, people. But anyways, thanks for watching. Um, and now we're, we've hit the top 10. Exciting. Exciting. Peace. Stay warm. Subscribe. All right. Bye.